greetings once again we welcome you to upload the channel of learning the channel of studying the living word of god today we are looking at yet another subject that is very very important which is uh the hell versus lake of fire so before i enter into this uh teaching i first of all want to mention in passing that there are many issues and aspects of the bible that are confused by so many people you'd find that there are concepts that are either people they combine them or people they separate them or people they don't know the differences between these two concepts so this uh, subject of today is one such area where people uh, fail to differentiate between uh, the hell and the lack of fire uh, some they want to think that it is one thing some they want to think that uh, uh, the other does not uh, that does not exist and yet these are two different entities that are in uh, in existence so we are going to be looking into them there are so many scriptures that we could go through uh, for the sake of time i wouldn't be able really to take uh, or to bring many many of such scriptures i'm just going to be using just a few scriptures uh, it is also part of uh, our Bible study that we need to also to go and research on this teaching that uh, we are going to be discussing on today. Glory be to Jesus. So some issues that are being uh, also uh, uh, confused in the word of God, if I may just mention but a few besides this uh, issue of hell and the lack of fire, is the issue that I spoke about even last time in one of the teachings where I was saying there is a confusion between uh, the first Adam and the last Adam. You would find people uh, say talking about the second Adam, which is something that does not exist. Jesus Christ is not the second Adam, he was the last Adam. So it's a lot that needs to be explained for, 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 for people to really see the impact of that confusion. If uh, somebody might take it as a, as a minor issue, it's not a minor. When we go deeper into it, you would realize why it is very, very important for us to really go to the word of God and see indeed what the Bible says about this instead of what people might think uh, is just a small or a minor er error that can be overlooked. There is also the issue of the rapture versus the second coming. All these are teachings that we may want to bring here and we may discuss. The rapture and the second coming, some people, uh, uh, they only teach about the second coming and they don't talk about the rapture. And yet these are two events that are going to happen at different at two different points in our in our lives and uh, we need now also to go into the word of god to look at the different scriptures that really can differentiate between these two and can really qual 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 qualify that indeed there are two different entities that happen at different intervals and indeed they are real hallelujah we also want to look at the issue of death and judgment there are some uh, who teach uh, that death is already judgment and yet it is not so uh, death is not the judgment judgment stands on its own there's a lot that happens between death and judgment for for, for example i would just say in passing that at one point there is going to be a time that everybody who has ever lived on this earth shall be alive at one point everyone shall whoever lived on this earth we shall be alive at one go and uh, those are the times that we are going to be seeing the judgments happening by the way the, these judgments are not the same there is what is called the white throne the judgment and then there is the judgment for condemnation which is the one that uh, is going to, to to happen towards the end of the book of revelations uh somewhere there around uh, revelations chapter 20 21 somewhere there glory be to jesus christ and also uh, there are many actually uh, this one that we want to focus on on a uh, hell and lack of fire a hell stands on its own it's a it's an entity that is on its own and the lack of fire is also on its own and these two places are existing uh, and uh, they are going to do different functions i think from the few scriptures that i have chosen here we are going to actually realize what i am talking about a hell for example it appears in the bible and it has so many other names that are uh, 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 explain the same thing that are talking about the same thing it does not just have a single name unlike the the lack of fire we don't see so many uh, uh, words or names that are also aligned with the lack of fire uh, as we compare with uh, 
with the hell. You find that hell is called hell, and at one point it is called hellfire, and at one point in the Bible it is called Sheol. And at other points it is called Hades or Hades. Some call it Hades, some call it Hades. It is still the same thing. It's still, all, all these scriptures are talking about, about, about hell. There are also some that uh, also use the name Tataru, using it also for the, for, the, for the same hell. But the lake of fire still remains the lake of fire. So we want to just look at some scriptures that can lead us into this discussion so that people need to, to know. Let's uh, go to Psalm uh, chapter 9 verse 17. The Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. And uh, here we need to also understand that uh, uh, they are, the Bible actually talks about the hell as a place that was prepared for the devil and his demons. The original mind of God when he made hell was not for men to go to hell. I hear of so many people who want to preach to say God is a very loving God and being a loving God as he is, how can God send people to hell? Where is the love of God? God forgives God, you know, such teachings that, are, that those are not, those are dangerous teachers. When you hear a, a man who teaches, a woman who teaches that uh, God is a, is, a, is, a, is a loving God, he will not send people to, to hell and you, uh, he's so loving that he can't uh, put a pain on people. Those run away from such preachers. Those are not right preachers. They are going to send you like exactly where they are trying to uh, 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 dodge they are trying to avoid that a place like that really exists. Uh, hallelujah. So it, uh, hell was prepared actually for the devil and his demons. That is why the Bible, what the Bible says. But man was not supposed to go to hell. Man goes to hell because once man decides to partner with the devil, once man decides to be uh, an accomplice of the devil, then automatically what it means is when the, hell, the devil is now punished, and thrown into hell, we will also find some people that are going to be finding themselves also there. Especially the last portion, the last point where we talk about uh, 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 the lack of fire. So uh, I would want also to read another uh, uh, scripture from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 5 verse 14, it says, Therefore, uh, shell has enlarged itself, it's talking about hell here, and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their, their pomp, and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. So here, uh, the prophet Isaiah was actually describing hell in this, inst in this scripture. And I, would, I wouldn't want to go deeper into what he really talked about or what he really meant as he spoke about hell having enlarged itself. But I would want people to understand that at one point, everybody was once closed into into, into into hell, people of the Old Testament, and they had to be redeemed. And when they were redeemed, a portion of the righteous, it, were, it also it became automatically hell. This is why now Isaiah was talking about this instant where Sheol had enlarged itself. And it means now the, the, the righteous, those people that were God-fearing, who were once locked under there by the devil, were waiting for the for the for this last sacrifice, which was the Calvary, the sacrifice of Calvary of the blood of Jesus Christ. You remember, Jesus Christ on the second day he ascended into hell. He went into hell. He went to free those that were bound uh, by the devil under there because nobody was born again. Nobody was righteous to go to heaven, even if they were God fearing. So it took now the righteousness of Christ to go and set those people free. You can read that from the book of Jude. And there are so many other scriptures that talk about even Peter in his epistles. He also speaks about this, of Jesus Christ going into the deep, deeper parts of the earth to go and set those who were under there, uh, kept captive by the devil free. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So now hell continues to remain. And this is a place that people that have not worshipped God, people that were not righteous, people that did not live their life according to the expectations of God, will go automatically when they die. They go there. And that is a place, it is just a bus stop. It is a place that is uh, where people are waiting, but there is pain, there is fire already, there is suffering already, there is everything that you can call evil already happening in that place. So it is right now happening. It is in existence as we speak right now. People are in hell. People are burning in hell right now. And yet, that is not the final place. 
with all the pain and the suffering, nobody will ever know that there is yet another place that is coming. I'm going to prove that there is another place which is going to be the final point from after a hell. Because a lot of people want to teach that hell will be the last portion. And some people want to teach that uh, nobody is in hell so far. Uh, some people are just somewhere where there is not known, but they are waiting after judgment, then they go to hell. You will find that uh, judgment actually does not send people to hell. People will actually come out of hell to go for judgment. And then they will be sent to the last place. And the, the lake of fire now being the last place. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So people, we need to understand some of these things as, uh, as, as, the, as the word of God continues to guide us. So if we may go uh, to the book of Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 10, I would want to read this scripture so that I, I bring it as proof of what I have said so far about, about hell and, and the lack of fire. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 10, it says, The devil who received them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they were they will be tormented day and night forever and ever so here people must understand now the bible is now talking about not hell this time but it's talking about the lake of fire and this lake of fire is not hell the next scripture is the one that is going to explain this out clearly for people that might think that this is a, 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 a wrong teaching. The next scripture is going to show us exactly. So this is a point where now the, the God is going to be judging the devil. And here we are hearing that the devil uh, who deceived them, meaning who deceived the world, was cast into the lake of fire, into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. So this beast and the false prophet, we are talking about the Antichrist, the man of sin. Right, the son of perdition, who is going to be leading the world, who is going to be the president of the one world government of the world that we are sl slowly drifting into, that we are already uh, 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 entering into. Right, this one world government, this global government, uh, which is going to be run by, uh, which is being organized by the United Nations and is going to make sure that there's going to be one world government, one world leader, one world currency, and one world religion. What we are moving into uh, slowly, slowly in these days that we are living in. And this is the push, a time that the church is going to be raptured. I have spoken about the issue of the, of the rapture versus the second coming. And Jesus Christ will snatch away the church so that the time of tribulation happens, which is a period of seven years. And the time of tribulation is the exact time of the beast who is going to be running this, uh, this world. And if you read from the book of Revelation, we, we hear when the seals were opened by Jesus Christ, the first seal, it produced a, a man who, who was putting on white and riding on a white horse, and he was released to the earth. And that one is the Antichrist. That one is not Jesus Christ. I've heard so many people teaching that that was Jesus Christ. That one is the Antichrist. It is the son of the devil. He is actually a devil incarnate who is going to be released by the devil into the world. And he is there. This man is living. He's a real human being who is there somewhere. And this man shall be revealed at, at the right time and shall be the one who heads the one world government. And he's going to be a ruthless person. He's going to be killing, especially those people who may want to confess Jesus Christ, who may want to continue following Christ, although the church and all the righteous people will have been raptured. So the rapture, once it takes place, then this man comes into effect and he now begins to lead the, to the government, the one world government. Right. This is a time that is going to be the time of tribulation of seven years. And the church and the saints shall be in, in, in heaven with Christ for the marriage supper of heaven for seven years while the world is under the, the one world government or is under the, the antichrist or the beast for seven years. And during that time, it's going to be a time of pain. It's going to be a time of suffering. A lot of people will be dying. Actually, the Bible says two thirds of the world shall be dead, shall be killed. And Jesus Christ spoke about this time and he even says, if this time had not been shortened, no flesh would have survived during that time. And also there are going to be uh, hardships that are caused by the Antichrist and his government on the people. And there are also going to be punishments that God himself will be sending upon the earth. We will see there are seven uh, trumpets, there are seven bowels, 
there are also uh, the seven seals that are going to be experienced where at one point for example the whole water on this earth shall be turned into blood and i don't know what is going to be happening during that time there's going to be pestilences there's going to be hunger there's going to be earthquakes there are going to be stars that shall be falling from heaven imagine stars not splinters splints from of meteorites that have, that have fallen onto the earth and caused devastating effects but in this instant it will be stars literally stars that will be falling and at times you know they are in the bible of the book of revelation explains that if stars will fall like figs that are falling from a, a, a fig tree that is being shaken imagine what is going to be happening to the world at that point and we also hear of beasts and animals that shall be released into the world and shall be devouring people there are going to be sicknesses and diseases there are going to be uh, so many wars that will be happening people being butchered and the like that's where we also hear of the remnant the people that of israel that god is going to be uh taking and hiding them somewhere in the mountains of bosra somewhere there in the land of in the in the places of the god of gaza where the war right now is happening between the jewish people or israelites and the and the philistines those things are reserved those places are already reserved by god as place that land is a divine place israel is the land that bears the name of the lord and he said this is going to be the land that bears my name forever so whoever might be talking about demarcating israel the united nations are sitting down to say it must be demarcated and uh, 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 Palestinians take this other area and the Israelites taking that area. That land was given to Abraham. It is a covenant land and it is the land where Jesus was born, where Jesus was crucified, where his second coming is going to happen. The whole church upon the second coming shall be landing exactly on Israel, right? And the Mount of Olive, and the Mount of Olive shall be split into two, into two, where now the new Jerusalem shall be established. And Christ Jesus shall go for the war of the Armageddon, where he shall set free the remnant, those people, those uh, remnant that will be hidden in the mountains of Bosra, when the Antichrist government will have surrounded them to destroy them. So all these, you read them from the book of Revelations, and a lot of people, they don't understand what these things are. But we need them to be understood. So after that, that is now when we see now, this, after the seven years, and then there is going to be a thousand year millennium. A thousand years after Christ comes for the second time and the church is now in the new Jerusalem there's going to be 1,000 year, years which is called the millennium reign of Christ where now the devil shall be locked in the deeper parts of the earth an angel shall come and bind him and put him under in the deeper parts of the earth and he shall be under there for 1,000 years and after 1,000 years he's going to be released again he will also go again and continue to deceive nations because nations will still be there people will still be living out there and yet the church and the righteous will be actually in the new jerusalem so all these are the things that the book of revelations explains then after the 1000 years reign of the millennium reign, reign of christ that is when now uh, uh, the judgment shall happen so all people that have died before us and people that are dying even today and the people that will die during the tribulation the seven years and people that will die during the millennium reign all these people will be going to hell i mean those that will not be born again or saved they will be going into hell and after that that's when we will see now after the 1000 years we will now see judgment the judgment happening now when now the devil himself is going to be thrown into the lake of fire and all those people that were with him that agreed with him will also be will have left hell to come for judgment that's why i said when i began that there's a certain point in life where everybody is going to be alive the righteous being in the in the in the new jerusalem and all people that have ever stepped on this earth shall be risen. Those that are in the grave, those that have been in, the, in, in, in hell, they will come for the final judgment. So at that point, everyone will be alive at one go. Then this, this judgment happens. The devil first and the, the, the beast, the, the false prophet. I don't want to talk about the false prophet who he is. Maybe in the next teaching, I'm going to talk about the false prophet also and explain what that, that, that means. So, if we read Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, it says, Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, look at what I was saying now. Remember, I said Hades is hell. And death itself. Here, the Bible is telling us that 
Hades, which is hell, and death will be cast into the lake of fire. Can you now see the difference? If we were saying hell, if people teach that hell is the final place, the hell fire is the final place. Now we are hearing that hell itself is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And death is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. This is why people will not die. The people in the, in the, in, in the, the righteous people who will be with Christ will not die. The people now that have left the hell who will be also thrown together with the devil in the lake of fire will also not die because death itself also has been thrown into that fire. So there won't be death. So there will be everlasting punishment, everlasting condemnation. I know that there are some people that teach that, no, when you are thrown into that fire, you will die and then you will rest. God cannot punish people forever. As long as the righteous will live forever and ever, those that are going to the hell, to the lake of fire, will also continue to live forever and ever. But they will be under torment, they will be under pain, they will be wailing, and they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So nobody must go there. We must never wish anybody to go there. This is why the gospel is being preached. We are preaching this gospel so that we empty the lake of fire, we empty hell so that we can fill up heaven. We are preaching the gospel so that those that hear, those that will, uh, whose hearts shall be cut to the heart, they will believe and they will also uh, uh, turn their lives, repent and become children of God. I want to give yet another scripture that continues to explain to us uh, the differences between the, 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 the hellfire or Hades or Shell or Tataru or, 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 or with, with the lack of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So now here we are seeing that now this is the judgment of everyone. Everyone. At one point shall have this book of life open. And this book of life, it contains the names of everybody. Beginning from Adam up to where we, we, we will be at that moment. Everybody's name is written. Whatever that we are doing on this earth is recorded in that book, whether it is good or it is not. You hear the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the, 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 the earth, the sons and daughters of men, seeking to check who does good. So which means whatever that we are doing as children of God or as those that have rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ is being recorded. And by that day, this book will be opened. And then those, anyone not found in the, in the book of life. So anybody who receives Jesus Christ, who is born again, who repents and is saved, their name is automatically written in the book of life. Those that have rejected and have continued to be deceived by the world, those that have continued to follow the things of the world, those that have thought that the gospel of Jesus Christ is foolishness, those are the ones now that are in trouble because their names will not be found in this book. And where are they going to go? They will be cast into the lake of fire, not into hell, because remember there are some that have been in hell all along. So now they are going to the final place, which is the lake of fire. So I hope somebody today is had an understanding that there is a difference between hell and the lake of fire. These are two places that are different. So many preachers, so many teachers that I've also heard, some even on television, you hear them confusing this. They want to call this thing as one. They want, some talk about one, they never talk about the other. So people must understand that these places are two different places that are going to have two different functions and their functions are going to be applicable at two different levels. And one is going to end up being thrown into the other, which is hell being thrown into the lake of fire. And this is going to be the end. And then the new earth will be coming and the new heaven. And we, the righteous, who will be in heaven, will be now sent into the new earth. And now life forevermore begins. So children of God, and also those that are hearing me today, do not let your life go in the direction of destruction. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Submit your life to him. Move away from the world and its, and its activities. Cut yourself away from wrong people. Find a Bible-believing church. Go and give your life unto Jesus Christ. Be born again. Change your life. Lead a new life. The pleasures of this world are not going to take us anywhere. By that time, people will realize 
that the things that they used to call pleasures of the world, they were not even worth it. Because the pain, the everlasting condemnation, is not even worth it. the joys of the world that people are following today. So I want to leave you today in the peace of the Lord. And I hope somebody today has learned something. Let us continue to discuss and to share in the comment section. We can also uh, add up or also uh, put on uh, also up your, your contribution so that we also know what you think. Because this platform is a platform of learning together. It is not a, a, a platform of uh, me just coming to dictate things on you. We want to learn together and to grow together in the things and the understanding of the things of God. So child of God today, I want to leave you. You are blessed today in Jesus' mighty name. Till we meet again in our next teaching and in the next discussion. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.